So in today's video, we are taking a look at um, Topo Athletics Ultra Venture 2. It's a shoe that I've wanted to try for some time now, and it, oh, why am I not holding it up? <laughs> Today we are looking at uh, Topo Athletics Ultra Venture 2. Oh, uh, Topo Athletics Ultra Venture 2. It's early, I'm sorry. Welcome back everyone, or if you're new to the channel, then welcome, thanks for watching, it's really appreciated. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. It is new brand day at the channel today, always an exciting time at Run For Adventure when we get to test brands or kit that we haven't tested and reviewed before. But it's also a running shoe brand that I've been looking forward to running in for quite some time now. So in today's review, we are taking a look at Topo Athletics Ultra Venture 2. It is a deep midsole trail running shoe with good width in the toe box to keep you comfortable while out on your long runs or even pushing the distance in an ultra marathon. We put some good miles into the shoe on a big mix of terrain. So before we dive into this full in-depth review, let's give you a few facts and figures on Topo Athletics updated Ultra Venture 2. The shoe retails in the UK for £135. Weight-wise, it weighs in at 325 grams in a men's UK 9.5 and 245 grams in a women's shoe. It runs off a 5mm heel offset, so we have 30mm under your heel and 25mm under your forefoot. The shoe is available in one colorway for men and for women, and when it comes down to size, I would say it's true to size with a very good width in the toe box. Moving on to the construction of the Ultra Venture 2, and it features this three-piece injected EVA midsole to offer the runner a nice lightweight, cushioned, and responsive ride. The outsole of the shoe is coated in Vibram's XS Trek Evo rubber, and then we've got this nice, evenly spaced, aggressive lug on that outsole to give you good levels of traction while running out on technical trails. Moving up to the upper in the shoe and it's constructed using this lightweight and breathable engineered mesh fabric. We've then got reduced overlays on that upper to increase breathability, especially while running in hot conditions. We've got this molded foam heel collar for a bit of additional comfort, but Topo have also put in this external TPU heel cradle. Then inside the upper, we've got this microfiber band that wraps around your midfoot. These features are there to make sure you feel dialed down into the midfoot of the shoe, locked into the back end of that shoe, so that you feel super secure, so no lateral movement while you're running out on the trails inside that upper. In the tongue you've got a nice level of padding and a nice level of padding around that heel collar and in the heel cup. And if you like running with gaiters on your trail shoes, Topo have worked in some really handy attachments into the upper of the shoe. So that's a few details about the spec but also the construction of the midsole and the upper in the Ultra Venture 2. We've given the shoe a thorough testing over the last couple of weeks so let's go through the features that we've really enjoyed about the shoe but also highlight a couple of things we feel could be improved but let's dive in to the good stuff first. The first thing we need to mention and probably the standout feature for me when it comes to the Ultra Venture 2 is the level of comfort that I got from this upper. Straight out of the box, it just felt super plush and probably one of the most comfortable uppers that I've put on my foot for some time. So you get this real nice level of comfort over the top of the foot around the heel, but you've also got this nice width in the toe box. I wouldn't say it's as crazy wide as say an ultra shoe, but you've still got a nice room to splay and wiggle those toes around. It just felt great around my foot. And then when it comes down to this, this molded foam heel collar, the level of padding in the tongue and around the ankle collar, again, just really, really comfortable around my foot. It was like the shoe was giving me a nice cozy, soft padded hug when I was running. Um, but even with all that comfort and all that padding, I still felt super locked in and dialed into this shoe. So having this molded heel collar and that sort of gusseted tongue that wraps around your midfoot in the shoe, I just felt super comfortable, but really dialed in and really secure, which sometimes when a shoe's quite padded, you don't get that sort of lockdown feel. So 
No lateral movement to speak of, even when I was running out on technical coast path or in woodland technical trails. Having that extra width in the toe box of the Topo shoe felt surprisingly good actually. Um, I haven't got a wide foot or anything like that. I'm actually quite narrow in foot width, but it was just nice to have that airy feel, that room you felt like you feel really relaxed in the shoe as you're running on foot strike. And it did kind of make me realize that maybe I am quite constricted in some of my other running shoes. It was a feeling I got very similar to this when I ran ultra shoes a couple of years ago but I felt that the ultra shoe was if anything a little bit too wide for my foot whereas having that slightly narrower toe box in the topo I think it just works better for my foot shape having an actual heel offset in the shoe when you compare it to an ultra shoe has also been a big bonus for me especially when I've been running distance in the shoe I know there's lots of runners out there that have crossed over to that kind of zero drop thing and it's been a real success and the issues the problems they were having before that have all kind of faded away so clearly zero drop does work for runners it's kind of the opposite for me I've sometimes had issues when I've been running in zero drop shoes especially if I'm running long in a zero drop shoe so um, I tend to spend most of my time running in a sort of four five six mil offset whether it be a road shoe or a trail shoe so having that five mil offset in the ultra venture 2 has definitely been a positive thing for me levels of traction from this outsole have been really really good uh, unfortunately or not unfortunately in the UK we've had actually a pretty good spell of weather and not a lot of rain since we've had the shoe so I haven't really got to test the shoe out in sort of tough wet muddy British conditions yet but that outsole is clad in Vibram rubber. Unfortunately, it's not Vibram Mega Grip rubber, which is a bit of a shame. I'm a big fan of that Mega Grip compound on a trail running shoe, but the shoe has handled all the trails, the sort of dry loose stuff, dry compact stuff, woodland rooted trails and tarmac exceptionally well. And I haven't doubted the levels of grip from that outsole once. So lots of positives when it comes to my first experience of running in a Topo Athletic trail running shoe. But I feel with just a slight bit of tweaking, there is a few things that could be improved when it comes to the Ultra Venture 2. The first thing is kind of a negative and a positive, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, let me explain having this deep midsole on the shoe so 30 mil on your heel 25 mil under your forefoot I was just expecting that midsole to feel a bit softer a bit more cushioned um, don't get me wrong it's not uncomfortable when it comes to the level of cushioning but I just thought it would be a little bit softer underfoot say like a, a hoka speed goat type of soft cushioning obviously having that firmness there's some real good positives coming from that you're on that deep midsole because it's a bit firmer you feel connected, dialed into the trails. You also feel very stable running on this platform. So I suppose it comes down to personal preference in cushioning with trail shoes. Some people are willing to sacrifice a bit of connection so they can be nice and plush and comfortable on that midsole. Whereas other runners want that midsole a bit firmer so they feel nice and connected and dialed into the trails underfoot. For me personally, I would have been willing to sacrifice a little bit of connection, not too much, but a little bit of connection, just to get a plusher, more cushioned feel from that midsole. Last up, there was a couple of times when I was running in more sort of rocky, dry, technical areas. When I was running downhill, descending quite quickly, I caught a couple of rocks quite heavy underfoot, and I did take a bit of impact through this midsole. I've looked at all the technical specs of the shoe, all the literature on the shoe, and I haven't seen rock plate mentioned once. So I take it there isn't a rock plate in this shoe. So maybe the addition of a nice thin rock plate worked into that forefoot would just help with a bit more underfoot protection. Nothing too heavy, nothing too stiff. Something similar to Saucony Peregrine 10 or 11 rock plate where it's nice and flexible, but it still gives you really good protection so it doesn't compromise the flex in the midsole of the shoe. So I must say I've really enjoyed running the miles in the Topo Ultra Adventure 2 and it's always a pleasant surprise when you put a shoe from a brand that you've never used before, a model of shoe that you've never run in before and it is super positive. But we've reached that time of the review where we need to get some scores on the Run for Adventure board so let's start with the price first. At £135 in the UK it's not the cheapest trail running shoe out there but 
with the running shoe world going crazy at the moment uh, with carbon plates and the prices going up with the latest this and the latest that I think 135 is pretty reasonable for a very versatile and well constructed trail running shoe so for price we're going to score the ultra adventure 2 a 7 out of 10 at run for adventure so on to comfort and performance and you really can't fault the levels of comfort and plushness you get from this upper on the ultra adventure 2 it is just a really nice place to be straight out of the box and they've just got the blend right of everything within that upper so nice and breathable you get a really good level of padding in that tongue but not too much same around the ankle collar and then you've got that molded heel cup that feels super comfortable around the back end of the foot even with that plushness having that sort of microfiber band you feel super connected and locked into that midfoot and then the toe box width, brilliant. It gives you that nice airy feel. You feel like you can be really relaxed on foot strike while running in the shoe. I think if that midsole had just been a fraction softer, the shoe would have scored even higher. But for comfort and performance, we're gonna score the shoe still a very solid, top performing eight out of 10. Last up, always to score and run for adventure is durability and so far, so good. Um, I did hear a few comments and a bit of feedback about the original version of this shoe having durability issues. So I was a little bit concerned, but I shouldn't have been. Um, no early signs of wear on that upper, no early signs of fatigue at the flex point of that upper. Moving down to the outsole, holding up really good to the mileage. Obviously being vibrant rubber, we should get good durability from this outsole. So I think we're gonna get lots and lots of miles in this shoe. So when it comes down to durability for the Ultra Venture 2, we're gonna score it a solid eight out of 10. So when you tally up all those scores at Run For Adventure, we're gonna give the shoe a well-constructed, very versatile 23 out of 30. As far as when it comes down to looks of the shoe, I know this is super subjective and I'm sure there's lots of people who like the look of this shoe out there. If you've followed the channel for some time, you know I like big, bold, bright, colorful running shoes. I want my running shoes to excite me. I wanna go and put them on and get excited about running. Unfortunately, this shoe doesn't really excite me. And if I'm honest, it looks a little bit dad shoe to me. I think Topo needs to spend a bit of time working on their looks and the aesthetics of their running shoes. Don't get me wrong, it's not top of our list how the shoe looks and it's all about the performance of the shoe, but I think Topo could do a much better job when it comes down to the colors and the designs. So when it comes down to looks, unfortunately the shoe is gonna get a thumbs down at Run For Adventure. On to comparisons to the Ultra Venture 2, and this is quite tricky because the Topo shoes have quite a unique sort of foot-shaped design with that nice wide roomy toe box. There's not many shoes on the market that offer that. The closest obviously would have to be an ultra trail running shoe, but remember they do run off a zero drop, so just something to be aware of. But shoes within their range, I would say the Timp 3, which we're actually testing at the moment for an up and coming review on the channel, and the Olympus 4 from Ultra would give you a very similar feel and fit to the Ultra Venture 2. So wrapping up with a quick conclusion, and I've really enjoyed my first experience of a Topo Athletics trail running shoe, which is definitely a good thing because we've got a pair of their new Mountain Racer 2s heading our way very very soon as soon as that shoe's been released. Another shoe from Topo that I've been wanting to run in for some time now. Very similar fit and width in the toe, but it does have a slightly softer midsole and we've got a full Vibram Mega Grip outsole on that shoe as well. So looking forward to getting my feet in them and giving them a thorough testing. I'd say if you're looking for that workhorse trail running shoe that's gonna cross over to lots of different distances and different types of terrain, and you like having that nice roomy sort of feel in the toe box of your shoes where you feel feet can stay relaxed and splay or you've always struggled for width in your trail running shoes and you feel you need a bit more space but also like me if you've tried ultra shoes in the past and you really like the fit and the width that that shoe gave you but you did struggle with that zero drop you're unsure about it or that zero drop gave you problems then maybe the best of both worlds in a topo shoe because the fit is very similar you've got that width but then you've got a nice little heel offset in the shoe as well then i would definitely recommend checking out the ultra venture 2 from topo but guys that is a wrap on another review at run for adventure really hope you enjoyed it guys hope you found it helpful if you did 
give us a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It only takes a second to do. It's completely free and we'd love to have you along and join the Run For Adventure family. Don't forget though to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when we upload any new content. We also love it when you guys get involved. So have you been running in the Ultra Venture 2 or any other shoes from Topo Athletic? Let us know how you've got on. Did you find the uppers really plush wrapped around your foot? How did you find that toe box width? How did you find the shoes performed? Let us know in the comments below. I've also left a link in the description and it's an affiliated link with Running Warehouse. So if you want to find out any more information about this shoe or you want to purchase a pair of the Ultra Venture 2s, um, it doesn't cost any more to purchase it through the link, but it's a great way of supporting the channel. And the last thing, I know I keep harping on about it guys, but we've just launched our first ever Run For Adventure technical running apparel. We've got short sleeve tees and some really cool running vests available for you guys at home. They're on pre-orders at the moment, so you've got to get your orders in guys, or else you're gonna miss out. And those orders close very soon on the 16th of May guys. So get in the mix, get your orders in, so you're gonna have some really cool Run For Adventure technical running apparel to run in and to train in, to racing this summer so that brings another review to an end at the channel thanks for watching guys it's really appreciated we will see you back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running